صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين and then we say to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh allah we want the path of whom the path of there are three groups here one group is the group of uh, those people who responded to the call of allah and they are known as an'amta alayhim allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown ni'mah to them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown favor to them so we we want their path not the path of the other two who are the other two ghayr al-maghdub alayhim those people who received the wrath wrath of allah anger of allah but the ballin and not the path of those who have gone astray so these are two ayat so in two ayat we have to explain the first sirat alladhina an'amta alayhim the path of those people to whom you have given favor yani you have given favor i mean that you have given tawfiq they became on the right path so who are these mun'am alayhim an'amta alayhim means those people who got the favor of allah they are called mun'am alayhim who got the name of who are these people one principle of tafsir is that quran explains quran you can have the tafsir of quran from quran from quran itself and then on second level you have the tafsir of quran from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the third level you may have some guidance from any companions of the prophet who are explaining some words of quran so the first one is try to understand quran by quran so who are mun'am alayhim who is this group in surah al an'am or is it surah an nisa ulaika alladhina an'ama allah alayhim ulaika alladhina an'ama allah alayhim min an nabiyyin was siddiqin was shuhada was salihin wa hasuna ulaika rafiq these are the people allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given favor to them and they are out of nabiyyin prophets as siddiqin those who are called most truthful people was shuhada those people who are were the martyrs was salihin and the pious people wa hasuna ulaika rafiqa and their company is the best company so now we know that when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying Uh, who are the people who got the favor of allah they start the highest one is nabi because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen them if you want to be a nabi can you be a nabi no by joining any university after graduating from the university you got the degree of a nabi no you can't this nabi is a function a duty which is given by allah only Allahu alam wa haysu yaj'alu risalatahu Allah knows better to whom to give this message so you can't get it from from any university itself so this is why so many imposter type of nabi have come in this world and they said we are prophet as well but they were not sent by by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they were sent by shaitan so the first one is anbiya anbiya all the prophets of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the messengers of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then below them are as siddiqin siddiqin are the very truthful people who got no doubt at all no doubt no doubt about deen this is why sayyidina abu bakr was given this title why he was given this title siddiq most truthful person because sayyidina abu bakr never got any doubt about the message of our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam got this uh, night journey to jerusalem and from jerusalem he went to the heaven this is called al miraj so the night of ascension the night of his journey to jerusalem he came back and uh, and he he narrated this uh, Uh, all all what happened to him to the people of makkah and they started ridiculing him oh the journey to jerusalem which takes one month in those days on the back of the camel you are saying that you just went in night time and came back it can't be 
And then these people came to Sayyidina Abu Bakr and they said to him, Abu Bakr, have you heard what your companion was saying, Muhammad? He says that I went to Jerusalem at night time and came back the same night. What was the answer of Sayyidina Abu Bakr? He said, if he is saying that, then he's, he's saying the truth. I believe in him. So that was the belief of Sayyidina Abu Bakr. This is why he was given the title of as Siddiq. As Siddiq, the most truthful person. Even Allah SWT, when he is uh, praising or uh, describing Sayyidina Ibrahim, he said, Inna hukana. Inna hukana Siddiq al Nabiya in Surah Bariya. Inna hukana Siddiq al Nabiya. He was a Siddiq, he was Nabi. We know that he's a prophet, but how? But how he was uh, a Siddiq? Whatever commandment he was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Labbaik, I am going to do it. Even he was thrown into fire. And he said, if that is the will of Allah, he said, Hasbun Allah wa name al wakil Allah is enough for me and is the best supporter. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, take your family, your wife, Hajira and your son, infant son Ismail to Mecca, where it was a barren valley, no water, no food, nothing. Did he ask any question? No. He just took them there. And when he was coming back, Hajira said, Ibrahim, with whom you are going to leave us? He said, with Allah. He was so confident of that. <laughs> And then you got, uh, you, you know the story of Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam. When Sayyidina Ibrahim saw in his dream or in his vision that he is going to sacrifice him. And that dream or vision is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was, he was ready to sacrifice him. He did not object at all. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted a test for him. He did not want him to sacrifice his son. Instead of his son, a ram was brought and which was sacrificed. But that was the character of Sayyidina Ibrahim, Siddiq, Siddiq. He was the most truthful person. And after that comes Ash-Shuhada. Shuhada is coming from Shahada. Shahada is a witness, is a testimony. So why don't we say, uh, what is our Shahada? When a person wants to enter into Islam, we say, say Shahada. Say Kalimatu Shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah ashhadu an la ilaha illallah ashhadu 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 I give testimony that there is nothing to be worshiped except Allah I give testimony that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the messenger of Allah so this testimony is called shahada this testimony is verbally la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah and this shahada is practically then I, I put the teaching of Islam into practice. I pray, I give zakat, I fast, I go for hajj, I only eat halal, no haram. This is all practical shahada. So a Muslim always is uh, supposed to give right testimony, right testimony. This is why I remember when I came to this country and uh, I used to go and find out about the mosques if they need some help and this and that. And then I see, because these mosque people, they used to write applications for assistance from Saudi Arabia at that time. So I used to go and uh, check them and ask, their, ask them what is their need. So I have to meet uh, the president of the mosque and president of a uh, secretary of the mosque. And it happened to me that I went to a certain small town. The mosque was closed. So I asked the people who is uh, the chairman of that mosque. They guided me to, to a shop. And I went to this shop. And I was surprised to see on that shop it was written fully licensed. That was the chairman of the mosque. Fully licensed. He got fully licensed. So I said to him, man, 
you are the chairman of the mosque and you are selling the liquor. What type of testimony you are going for Islam, giving for Islam? This is the testimony. He said, no, no, I don't drink it. I don't drink it. I just sell it. Can you accept this thing? Can you accept? Because the Prophet said that Allah SWT has cursed the liquor and the one who manufactures it and the one who sells it and the one who drinks it and the one who carries it, the one to whom it is carried, all of them they are cursed. And one who sell, one who buys it and one who sells it. So when you sell the wine or liquor or whatever uh, intoxicants, you are actually under the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, as a Muslim, you have to give the right testimony. If you lie, even lie to the government, lie to the state, that is wrong. That uh, you should give uh, uh, the, the right testimony because you are the carrier of Islam. You have to have give the right testimony. Now the person who gives this testimony with his blood means he was uh, in the battlefield and then he was martyred defending Islam. We say he is Shaheed, Shaheed, Shaheed. Only why this word Shaheed is used for him? Because he has given this testimony in the highest form with his blood. So these are as shuhada And then after them come as salihin those who believed and they have done good deeds, good deeds, good deeds, good deeds. Good deeds. Are you a mu'min? Are you a believer? Yes, I am a believer. How can you prove that, that you are a believer? Only with your action. If there is no action, no, no action, no Islamic action at all, then you are not a true believer at all. You judge a thing, anything. I got this uh, heater, for example, this heater. Hmm? And I keep this heater in my house. Why? Because it gives heat. Whenever I need some heat and I plug in, I got the heat. So I say, oh, this heater is working. So let me use it. But if it does not work, what I am going to do with this heater? I will throw it. Same thing, your battery, your battery in the car. If it is dead, are you going to keep it because it looks very nice? huh? No, you are going to throw it. It is not working. Throw it! Because it is not giving its function. So you, oh believer, if you are not giving your function, then you you have to judge yourself. So Salihin comes the fourth one. Nabi, Nabiyin, Siddiqin, Shuhada, Salihin, Wahasuna Ulai Karafiqa. And their company is is a good company. Here said Wahasuna Ulai Karafiqa. Because those uh, those people who are uh, you know, some people who who claim to be prophets and they were not the prophet of Allah. Their argument was that uh, this ayah is saying that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have a favor upon someone and these people could be prophets, could be siddiqeen, could be shuhada, could be salihin. So they say that uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me a favor, he can make me a nabi. But the end of the ayah is a refutation of his claim. The end of ayah is وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا You are asking their company. They, their company would be a very good company in Al-Jannah. You are not saying that I want to be a Nabi. I want to be a Shaheed. Like the conversation between two Sahabi. One is Talha, one is uh, Zubair. They are both among the ten companions who were given the good news of al Jannah in this life. Ashara Mubashara bil Jannah. Talha and Zubair. Both of them got ten sons each. Now Talha named them after the names of the prophets. 
and Az Zubair. Uh, Az Zubair named them after the names of uh, Sahaba like Abdullah, Abdullah bin Zubair. So, as a friend, they started uh, talking to each other. So Zubair was uh, saying he was proud. He said that all my sons are named after the prophets. Among your sons, there is no one among the names uh, after the names of the prophet. So what Zubair said to him, he said to him that I named them. Uh, uh, actually, he named them after the names of the martyrs, Shuhada. So he said that you have named your sons after the names of the prophets, but they can't be prophets. They can't be prophets. And I have named them after the martyrs, and I hope that they would be martyrs in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that this is possible. So this is just a, a conversation between two of them. It does not mean that uh, if you just name uh, someone a good name, he would uh, keep that name. Uh, he, he will he will be up to that name. That is uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gives tawfiq to us. وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا And after that comes the other ayah. The last ayah. غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ Not the path of those who got غَضَب. غَضَب means the anger of Allah. وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ And not the path of those who got who, uh, who who got astray from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who are these people? غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ who are these people? Um, uh, the people who got Ghadab were Bani Israel. Mm -hmm. And the and people, Bali. Uh, they are uh, uh, Nisara, uh, sorry, <coughs> Nisara. The, Nisara uh, Christians, Christians you mean? Christians, yes. Ah, so uh, we have to give uh, the expression in this way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before us, before Muslims, before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was an ummah called Muslim ummah. They were Muslims. Who were Banu Israel? Israel is the name of Jacob, Yaqub. He got 12 sons, including Yusuf, Joseph. There were 12 tribes and they are called Bani Israel. So all these Bani Israel, they were Muslims in those days. They were just like us. They were Muslims. MashaAllah. They were following the, the way of the prophets of Allah SWT. And Allah SWT has sent so many prophets among them. Kings like David. Kings like his son Suleiman or Sulaiman. So this was a great Muslim ummah which was before us as a, a witness for this deen. They were actually Shuhada, shuhada, witness for this deen. Like we, now we say, we are kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat lil nas. Huh? You are the best ummah you created for the guidance of the mankind. The huh? takunu shuhada al nas. So you become shaheed, witness upon the people. In the very same way, these people, they were witness of this deen before us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Send them many, many prophets, which are known as biblical prophets now. Armia, Jermia, all these names. They are all the names of uh, of the prophets of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So, I have to charge it as well. Huh? So, this is the story of uh, the story of uh, the people before us. But this ayah needs a lot of explanation. غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَضَّالِّينَ And I'm looking at uh, my watch. So uh, we said that at the end, we I am going to give you a story, just a story. Mm -hmm. So I leave uh, this bit. غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَضَّالِّينَ Because it got a lot of explanation to our next lesson. And uh, let us have this story. And before this story, before this story, 
There are five surah which starts with Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. There are five five surah, surah in the Quran. Five surah. One is Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Surah Al-Fatiha. Uh, which is the second one? Second one. Surah Al-Kahf. Surah Al-Kahf. Alhamdulillah Al-Ladhi. Huh? Alhamdulillah. 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 ولم يجعل له عوجا نعم that is سورة الكهف آه three more سورة نعم three more سورة سورة الأنعام سورة الأنعام in the beginning of سورة الأنعام also الحمد لله three سورة and then the fourth and fifth they are together سورة سبعة and after Surah Saba, Saba with Seen, uh, not with Swad. <laughs> uh, Surah Saba, and then after that is Surah Fatir. Surah Fatir. No. Surah Fatir. They also begin with Alhamdulillah. So uh, we have some discussions about why they begin with Alhamdulillah later. Anyhow, this is an additional, additional point which I have given to you. Five surah beginning with Alhamdulillah. Now, now the, the story for uh, today is that is the story of a king and a minister. His minister, Wazir. Wazir is the minister in Arabic, Wazir. So this Wazir was a good person. Whatever happens, whatever happens, good or bad, he would say, what Allah wants would happen. Masha Allahu. Can, huh? What Allah does, that is good. What Allah does, that is good. So the king and uh, wazir with other uh, courtiers, they were going for uh, hunting. And in that hunting, the king was injured in his finger. His finger is almost cut off. He was in pain. And the minister said, the wazir said, what Allah does is good. So king became very angry. How could you say that? He put him into the prison. And then he said, I will, I will see that uh, now you are in prison. When he threw him into the uh, prison, he said, what Allah does is good. And the king said, I will see what is good in it. So, the minister was in the prison and the king, after a few days, he went for hunting once again. It must be a, a jungle where, uh, where, he, where he lost his courtiers and he remained alone. And then he was taken by some, uh, you know, some people in that jungle, those, uh, you can say that, the people who are what what is the name for those people who who eat the human beings? Hmm. Cannibals. Huh? Cannibals. cannibals. Ah, cannibals. Cannibals. Yes, cannibals. Ah. So he was taken by the cannibals tribe, and they said, "Oh, we got a man, and this is a day when we offer a sacrifice to our gods." So they took him. They took the king, and they were preparing him for for the sacrifice to, to slaughter him. <laughs> then someone said, but we should offer a sacrifice which is complete and perfect. And this man, his finger is, uh, is cut off. He is not complete. So we can't give incomplete sacrifice to our gods. This is how they spared his life. And he came back. And he realized that what Allah has done with him that was good. What my minister was saying, that was uh, uh, that was all right. It was a good, but that, that my finger was cut and I was relieved. So he asked uh, the minister to be brought to him. And uh, of course he was freed. But he said to the minister, now I understand that uh, by my finger when it was cut, I, my life was saved. But what was good for you when you were in the prison? You were thrown into the prison and you said, what, what Allah does, that is good. 
So what is good in it? The minister said, if you did not throw me into the prison, I would have accompanied you in your uh, hunting. And when we were both captured by these people, cannibals, they will see that you are incomplete, so you are not good for sacrifice. Then they will see me and they say, oh, he is complete. <laughs> he should be sacrificed. So this is how I have been saved. So the king realized that what he has said, that is uh, quite right. Uh, so this is what uh, we should realize that this is our iman that whatever happens there must be some good into it even if we are in such circumstances nowadays we are uh, yani, like uh, people in house arrest uh, just in the house we can't go out just think there must be something good in it as well for us and that is the faith of a believer Whatever is mentioned for you, you will get it. Whatever is not mentioned for you, uh, not mentioned, sorry. Whatever is not meant for you, you will never reach it. You do your effort. You are looking for a job, do your effort. But don't panic. If it is written for you, you will get it. And if it is not written for you, you will never get it. This should be all. This gives you a lot of satisfaction in your life. People are looking for more and more, more and more always. And when they don't get it, they commit suicide. Because I'm not getting what I want. No. You just try. Try what you want to achieve. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will, that you will you will get it then nobody can make you miss it and if it is not meant for you you will never get it so inshallah alhamdulillah now it is uh, the time of salat